Next section. Is airing the South Park morally permissible? Some people think that South Park should be taken off the air. Many such people are parents who think that South Park is a bad influence on their children. They, absorb, they observe their children behaving badly after watching an episode of South Park as they emulate Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny, and thus they want the show pulled. But for an adequate response to these parents, one need only look as far as the South Park movie. South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. In the movie, the South Park parents object to the Canadian fart-filled joke, Terrence and Phillip. It's giving their children potty mouths, they suggest. They fight to get it off the air and even go to war with Canada to get that done. But the parents reveal their true motives as they sing the Emmy-nominated Emmy song, Blame Canada, the end of which goes like this. The smut we must stop, the trash we must smash, Laughter and fun must all be undone. We must blame them, excuse me, we must blame them and cause a fuss before somebody thinks of blaming us. In an effort to accomplish their goal of shifting the blame, Sheila, Kyle's mom, even shoots Terrence, Phil, and, Terrence and Philip in the head right in front of her eight-year-old son, Kyle. And when he lets a little holy shit slip out of his mouth as a result, Sheila ignores the fact that she has just exposed him to the horrendous violent experience of watching his own mother gun down two innocents in cold blood, and instead simply scolds him. Watch your mouth, young man! The message of the movie is twofold. First, parents are inconsistent when it comes to what they'll let their kids watch on television. They think it's perfectly fine to let their kids watch the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers beat the shit out of some poor villain, just as long as they don't say the word shit in the process. And two, it's the parent's responsibility to not let kids Excuse me, it's the parents' responsibility to not let their kids watch shows that are not meant for kids, like South Park. Parents need to take responsibility for their kids and raise them themselves, not let TV raise their kids and then legally TV tail excuse me, legally tailor television to meet their personal moral standards. But others want South Park off the air simply because it's a negative effect on adult society. South Park offends people by displaying offensive material. For example, the name of the kid's boy band was Finger Bang. <laughs> they make fun of celebrities. Barbara Streisand is bent on world domination and Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. They express opinions that many people think are false. Anti-smoking activists such as Rob Reiner are hypocrites or global warming is a myth. That's uh, whenever Al Gore chases man bear pig. <laughs> They bash specific religions. They suggest that Joseph Smith just made up the Book of Mormon, and L. Ron Hubbard did the same for Scientology. And they make fun of specific religious doctrines as well, evangelical evangelism and Catholic iconography. In fact, South Park is downright blasphemous. For example, Jesus fought Santa Claus in their second internet cartoon, calling him an effing pussy in the process, and he pooped on George W. Bush in Cartoon Wars Part Two. They have been portraying God himself as a small, hairy hippo with cat arms and a monkey's tail since season three, and probably worst of all, they even had Saddam Hussein call God a stupid asshole in season six. Those who object to South Park on such grounds, and consequently try to get South Park pulled from the airwaves, claim that Matt and Trey have no right to say such things. Now, of course, Matt and Trey will reply by pointing out that they have a right to free speech, and most certainly they do. But the question still must be asked, does the right to free speech include the right to express what the majority thinks are false opinions, obscenity, and blasphemy? Well, as Curtis and Aaron argue in chapter 10, called South Park and the Open Society, the right to free speech does guarantee the right to express obscenity, blasphemy, and even falsehoods. Those who support such a position, such as Popper, Mill, and even Thomas Jefferson, argue that ensuring an open society, which guarantees the right to say such things, is the only way to guarantee the development of the entire human species by guaranteeing that it discovers the truth. How do they argue this? Take Mill's argument, for example. Mill is a utilitarian and argues that the rightness and wrongness of government action should be determined by whether it brings about the greatest, num the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest number of people. Consequently, he suggests, that the only purpose for which power can rightfully be exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent definite harm to others. 
Millard Grant that one's right to freedom of speech does not include the right to yell fire in a crowded building or to incite people to riot, murder, or rape. These words lead people to being harmed in a different way and would not produce the greatest good for the greatest number. But since obscenity and blasphemy can never do definite harm to others, in fact, such words can only harm you if you let them by taking them seriously, our right, our right to say such things must be protected. Mill would never agree with those who say such things, but would fight for their right to say them. Further, Mill argues, even if one wants to say something that is false, we must protect his or her right to do so. Suppressing falsehood with a law merely guarantees that the truth is never challenged. But if the truth is never challenged, it's never defended. And if it's never defended, people will forget why it was true in the first place. In the absence of challenge, the truth fails to be a living truth and becomes simply a dead dogma. Instead of repressing, excuse me, instead of repressing those who disagree with them, the defenders of truth should rejoice when people speak out against it. It gives them a chance to remind themselves and convince others of what the truth actually is. But most importantly, Mill argues, guaranteeing that every opinion is heard and considered is the only way for us as a species to guarantee that we discover the truth. Most often, the public opinion is not the whole truth. And the only way to discover the whole truth is with free and open debate and discussion. As Thomas Jefferson said, truth is great and will prevail if left to herself. She is the proper and sufficient antagonist to error and has nothing to fear from the conflict with error she, unless she is disarmed of her natural weapons, free argument and debate. That's page 119. It seems that our first questions have now been answered. Is watching South Park morally permissible? It certainly seems to. In fact, laughing at Cartman's racism doesn't endorse it, it indicts it. Should South Park be allowed to stay on the air? Certainly. Parents shouldn't let their kids watch it, that's for sure. But it should be, it would be a violation of Matt and Trey's right to freedom of speech, and thus a morally criminal act to dictate by, by law that they cannot say what they do say. 